Hi, this is Vincent Hammer from ExoCAD. Just wanted to give you a quick uh, overview video uh, on how you can evaluate the uh, different thicknesses of the different areas of the partial. I'm um, going to do that from two perspectives. In the beginning of the video, we're going to be looking at how you do that as a user. Um, and in the second part of the video, I'm just going to briefly show how someone who is manufacturing the partial um, could quickly check uh, what parameters you used um, and also uh, identify the different areas of the partial uh, to test them for different thicknesses before they go into production. Okay, so we have the, the tools that we've always had in partial CAD uh, since the beginning um, is this measure wax tool. So you can, can hold this anywhere over the, over the partial, over the wax, and it will measure the shortest distance um, to the uh, refractory and block out underneath. So you can use this to, uh, to quickly evaluate if there's areas that are thicker and th or thinner than you would like. Um, then also there's the colorized thickness tool. Um, this is a little more heavyweight, but it also gets the job done. So here you would color the entire wax area um, and you can set a minimum and maximum thickness and then see how everything uh, lies within that. So let's just quick apply that and take a look. So here everything that is 70 microns or less um, will be colored blue and everything that's over uh, 1.2 millimeters will be colored red. Um, and this also gives you, uh, gives you a good uh, insight into uh, different thicknesses. Um, and then finally, uh, what is new in, in Rieka is the cut view. Cut view is available from the context menu. Um, and here you can, uh, you can zoom in and uh, move your plane through the partial. And you can just drag to uh, get your distances. If you hold down a control key, you can, it won't throw out your previous um, uh, measurements and you can see where they're um, showing up in the model as well. Um, <clears throat> also, I, I always have to mention this because I'm an engineer. Um, with this cut view, it's a little bit dangerous because it's 2D, and if this plane is, is at an angle, you, you get thicknesses that actually don't represent the shortest distance. In that sense, this simple tool where you're just hovering over it is better because this, this looks in a, a 3D sphere around the, around the point to find the closest uh, distance to the refractory. Um, but still, I mean, as long as you, you're aware that you're not looking at some crazy angle here, this this will give you a give you a good idea. Okay, so um, those are the ways uh, that you can quick verify your um, your partial. Um, the uh, the other thing is when you save it in the partial info file, it actually now records uh, build parameters. Um, so basically, for every uh, curve that was used, so for your major connector curve, your mesh curve. Um, and then your clasp curves, and there'll also be finish lines if you use if you use them, uh, as well as bars and pipes uh, and posts as well. Um, it basically has a section with all the parameters that were used to apply um, that tool. So somebody who would want to automatically check to see that the thicknesses used um, meet with the production process um, could scan this file and, and look for for the different thicknesses to make sure that they are they are within the tolerance. And then finally, in uh, Save for Build, what I want to show you, there's a setting uh, that you have to set in here. Um, let's see, add part tags to build. So th this will add a tag to every triangle to record what part of the partial it, it is. So it'll record the clasp, major connector, posts, and all those things. It will uh, tag those separately. So if this is set and you do your Save for Build, And uh, let's uh, turn off the additional parts here. We now also have the option to show part area tags in build. And that basically shows you um, the colorization. It's basically coloring the triangles differently based on what part it is. Um, so it looks like my post coloring didn't work. Um, so that's something I need to look into. <laughs> but um, basically, uh, this is set up to identify um, more critical and less critical areas. So the inside of the clasps have a different color um, uh, in, on the inside than on the top, right? So the same with the major connector because the main thing we're concerned about here is the is, is fit issues. So we'd, we would want the, uh, the areas that are touching the model to be um, identified properly so they could potentially be milled at a higher accuracy. Um, and then areas that are the other areas um, like the top of the major connector um, could, for instance, be milled with less accuracy. It, it basically allows people who are uh, digitally processing and producing these partials um, to make uh, make better decisions about um, where certain thicknesses should be or where more tolerance is required to get a better fit. Um, but it also would allow them to to identify those areas that potentially might be too thin.
Okay, so it looks like I have a little work to do. I got to uh, put in my uh, my post detection. Um, but other than that, that's what I want to show you. This is build 465. Most of what I showed you in the later half of the video is only in build 465. All right, thanks for watching.